Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Marcus, the Debt Free Dad here. We talk finances and attorney reactions. Sometimes there's a reaction to a current event, trending news and entertainment or sports, or is an attorney reaction to something finance related. If you're new to the channel, you've never been here before, hey, I'm a licensed attorney. I'm licensed in several jurisdictions. None of those jurisdictions amount to me being your counselor at law. So what that means in short is never listen to a talking head on YouTube, even if it's your boy, okay? <laughs> so what you want to do if you are seeking legal or financial advice, always do your research, your due diligence, find a professional in your local area. I got to give that disclaimer out for the bar, so there's no issues with the folks at the Bar Association. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about zombies, okay? Like, hey, I don't know. I'm a horror movie buff. I don't know if y'all are a horror movie buff, but uh, one of my favorite genre of movies in the horror category is zombie movies. This is like zombie movies and vampire movies are kind of neck and neck. Like real talk, I actually sit and think sometimes and be like, yo, I think I could survive a zombie apocalypse. I've been deployed. I got some survival skills. Like I think, I think if a zombie apocalypse happened, I'd be all right out here in these streets for a little while. I don't know. Being in the city might be tough, but I think I could figure it out. In any event, we're going to talk about things coming back to life to kick you in the ass. <laughs> zombie mortgages. Now, I know y'all like, what the hell is a zombie mortgage? It's something I never heard of. So I'm going to give y'all a little bit of background. Then after I give the background, we're going to dive into a video. And I want y'all to let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of a zombie mortgage. Or if you know somebody where one of these zombie mortgages came back to pretty much cause them all sorts of headaches and potentially cause them to lose their home. If you get some value out of this video, make sure you go below, like, subscribe, comment, share, all of that good stuff. If you don't like it, double tap the dislike button. All of that stuff will help the algorithm, help this video get out to more people. And A, is the best way you can help the channel, and it's free to do so. Now, uh, essentially what we're talking about is people who have second mortgages. Now, there are a few ways that people can get second mortgages. The most common way, actually, is for a homeowner to get a mortgage for their house. Let's say you get a $400,000 mortgage, and you say, you know what? I need some additional money. I need... Uh, you know, I want some money to maybe pay things off or something like that. So sometimes people will borrow against the equity in their home and in fact create a second mortgage on the house. So you got a $400,000 loan for a house. You pay it down to about three fifty. dollars You need to get some money for an emergency or to get out of some debt. You borrow on your home and now you have your original mortgage that you're making payments on and you have this second mortgage you're making payments on. That's way number one. Way number two is essentially people get a second mortgage right off the break. They have these split mortgages, which you don't see that often, but a lot of people are bringing them back. I just heard of some financial institution doing like a 93-7 loan uh, split. But essentially, you can get a second mortgage when you initially buy the house. The bank may finance you for 80%. Sometimes you can go to another financial institution to get the, the additional 20. Or in unique circumstances, bank A can have a 80% loan for the home that you want to purchase and give you a separate loan for the 20% loan. So how are these second mortgages becoming zombie mortgages? Well, because the whole concept of what a zombie is. You think it's something that's dead, like a regular person, and never going to come back to bother you. The next thing you know is chasing you down the street with a slow walk, trying to eat your brains. Okay. So essentially what happened in 2008, and I'm very familiar with the housing crash of 2008, because I work expressly with identifying, investigating, and prosecuting fraud related to the TARP program. But in 2008, during the housing crisis, the value of homes plummeted dramatically. And if you don't know what the TARP program is, the Trouble Asset Relief Program is a program that Obama and Congress passed essentially to help people stay in their houses when their homes were upside down after the crash. But essentially what happened 2008, 
the housing market had crashed. When the housing market crashed, people who had split mortgages and had a second mortgage, maybe it was an 80 20, a 90 10, whatever the breakup was, people who had second mortgages, they actually were told in some instances to stop making payments on those second mortgages. Well, why is that? Well, for some instances, and we'll dive into it with the video, but in some instances, they may have refinanced the first mortgage because the home value had decreased so much. The financial institution said, you know what? We aren't even collecting on those mortgages, so don't even worry about it. These people thought the mortgage was gone. Lo and behold, what happened? Those banks, even though they weren't collecting on that second mortgage, they sold that second mortgage to another institution. That individual homeowner never got a notice again about that second mortgage. Now that home prices are skyrocketing up, they're sitting there holding that second mortgage that they bought for pennies on the dollar that they now have a chance to recoup because a person's home value has increased so high. So now homeowners are being forced into foreclosure because they're on the hook for the second mortgage that they hadn't made payments on. Some may have just forgot about it, which is completely asinine and irresponsible, but others were expressly told by their lender not to worry about it. Now that those second mortgages have been sold, the home values went up. Now the companies holding those financial instruments are coming after the homeowners, forcing them into foreclosure because they have a chance to get their money back. Think about it. If a home goes into foreclosure, if a person is forced to file bankruptcy, that first mortgage is going to be in first position, so they'll get paid first. But because the home values are so high, there's a strong chance that that second mortgage that's in second position will also get paid. So let's dive in the video. We're going to get some more details. Then we're going to come back, talk about it, and wrap things up. Let's get it. And today's Money Watch, a warning to consumers about debt that may come back to haunt you. Potentially tens of thousands of homeowners are suddenly facing possible foreclosure after making mortgage payments one time for years. National consumer correspondent Usher Qureshi is here with what you need to know about so-called zombie mortgages. Usher, good morning. Good morning, Nate. Well, if you've ever taken out a second loan on your home, you could end up with something that turns into a zombie mortgage. This can happen when you lose track of your loans and your lender isn't sending you statements regularly, making sure you pay on time. You miss payments, that adds up, and then the debt collector can come after your home. Okay, real quick, and I think they're going to go on this later on in the video. I watch most of it, not all of it. But uh, typically, not all the time, but in most states, if you don't get a statement, if you aren't getting a bill every month, it's illegal to continue to add interest and fees on without notification. It's just kind of a basic due process. You have to have some type of notice, but uh, that's just point number one. Let's dive back in. This is gorgeous. Thank you. Thank Your little you. sanctuary. Sanctuary, yes. After this Iraq war veteran came home to California, she built her own tranquil backyard getaway to find a little peace after years in a battle zone. Sure. And what do you use this space for? Meditation, for sure. A home she calls the heart of her family. But last year, after more than a decade of paying her mortgage on time, Laverne Simmons found out she could lose it all. Were you surprised when you got that notice of default 10 years after you got your loan modification. Definitely. I haven't been late or asked for a payment arrangement or anything. When Simmons took out a second mortgage in 2014, she believed her new monthly payment covered both her original mortgage and her second. But okay. Now, that's a crazy assumption to make unless you are expressly told this by your lender. And even if you are expressly told this by your lender, I don't give a damn what they say over the phone make sure you get it in writing if you don't have anything in writing is as if it never happened unless you got an audio recording but most people aren't doing that but she was mistaken when you buy a house federal law requires your lender to send out periodic statements so you know how much you owe simmons says over 10 years on her second mortgage she never got one with interest and late fees piling up her original $65,000 loan ballooned to more than $140,000. She has to pay up or lose her home. They were ready to strike like a snake, you know? 
that was right for the right moment. Her loan servicer, Real Time Resolutions, recently settled a class action lawsuit with a different homeowner who claimed she'd been foreclosed on without ever receiving the required monthly statements. RTR denied wrongdoing and told us they aren't interested in speaking with us. It's been pure hell. I served my country. I got injured in Iraq. I come home and yeah, I and, feel you. and this is what That's I have terrible. to go through as a veteran. I'm exhausting me. Honey. Yes. Mm -hmm. She turned to California realtor Rich Sherman, who says he's seen it happen to more than 100 homeowners like Simmons. Now he's helping some of them fight to keep their homes. And what happens is the debts get sold in the secondary market mm -hmm. to these what I call vulture capitalists who buy these things for pennies on the dollar. And then they turn around and they try to enforce the full face value of the loan, including all the back interest, all the back penalties and everything else. How is this legal? In many cases, it's not. We're really worried that this is a predatory scam and we want to stop it. Rohit Chopra is the director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. This is a big failure from the lead up to the financial crisis where regulators in Washington weren't watching what was happening on the ground in local communities. Are you hopeful that you're going to win this battle? I hope so. I'm determined to fight for my home. I'm definitely determined. And if I lose this, is I don't know what I do. I don't know. So to protect yourself, you should start by checking your credit report. If you have a mortgage, make sure there isn't a lien on your property that you've lost track of. And if you do get a bill that appears to be for zombie debt, don't pay it immediately. Instead, investigate, ask for proof, and consider contacting an attorney or your local legal aid counsel to try and help navigate the process. I mean, look, people obviously should stay on top of their financial matters and their bills. Checking the credit report is great advice, channeling Joe Schlesinger here. But at the same time, it feels like you shouldn't be liable for something you're not getting a bill for. Right? right. They need to deliver it to you. Exactly. And, and the, the thing about this is, is it's not just mortgage payments, right? Zombie debt can happen with student loans, auto loans, medical debt as well. So you've got to be more vigilant about keeping track of these things, especially when you're not getting regular bills mm. or you think you should be getting regular bills and they're not coming. And so many banks are also trying to offer people loans. You get stuff in the mail all the time. So like people are susceptible to all of these new products out there. Yeah. And then it's, you know, we don't understand the fine print. The stuff yeah. is tricky. Yeah, do your own investigating, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thanks, Usher. Guys. All right, so, hey, I think the most valuable piece of information that they gave, and I'm going to just keep it a buck with you, and I'm not saying that this is this veteran's, this lady's fault, but over a 10-year period, you never looked at any of your official credit scores. Um, there were laws in place over a 10-year period during the pandemic that allow you to pull like four credit reports a year. Normally you can pull at least one a year under normal circumstances. Over a 10 year period, you never took the chance to actually look at your credit just to see what was on there. If you would have looked and saw what was on there, you would have, that, that second mortgage still being there would have been something that jumped out to you immediately. So again, I'm not saying this lady is to blame, but you do have to take some ownership and accountability and understanding that, yo, these are your finances. Nobody going to look out for your stuff the way you're going to look out for your stuff. So the, 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 one of the key things you can do, at least annually, I would say probably two times a year, you should check your credit score, uh, your credit report, just to look at it for accuracy. The second thing is make sure that you have a detailed understanding of uh, you should get things in writing. Nobody cares what you say. Nobody give a damn about what you say you said. You, <laughs> you need to have things in writing if you want to have some evidence to hold up in court. And the third thing, this is actually kind of wild. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that the beautiful city that I live in is a little uh, special at times. And they jacked up my taxes on my home two consecutive years as a row in a row by classifying my property as uh, abandoned property instead of uh, occupied residential property. Because before I bought it, it was vacant for like a year because the bank just owned it because I had to get some sewage work done when I bought it in the whole nine. But in any event, that mistake cost my mortgage payment to go up something crazy like $1,200. And because of this mistake, I had to pay $1,200 for a certain amount of time 
until I was able to finally get things figured out and, and adjust things. So me personally, if you're in your town, I think once a year is good. They Every city and every state has a list of homes that are in the foreclosure list. And as a courtesy, you might want to just go gander at that list at least once a year just to make sure your stuff isn't on there. I had two instances, actually. The first one was a tax issue where the state messed up. The second one was when I purchased my home, my home sits on two lots. Lot A is the bigger parcel of land where the house actually sits. Lot B is the backyard. Well, because they didn't do my paperwork correctly at the time of purchase, my mortgage payment satisfies the payments and the taxes and the escrow for lot A, not lot B. So all the years I was in my house, I'm making my mortgage payment. I'm making everything on time. There's no issue. I wake up one day and I'm like, what the hell is this white guy doing in my yard? He about to get his, <laughs> he, this is about to be a Second Amendment issue. I go out there, I have a conversation with him. And what do I find out? That second parcel wasn't included. My backyard wasn't included uh, in the actual paperwork. So the responsibility to pay taxes on my backyard was solely on me. Now, I ain't gonna lie. At first, I was like, man, I'm not paying taxes on that. If someone, if somebody want to uh, come through and buy my backyard from me, they more than welcome to buy it. They just gonna have to see me coming out on my balcony every day, naked, pissing over the side of it. And they'll move. <laughs> but I ultimately decided to pay it. But yeah, my backyard was actually on the state foreclosure list, and I had to pay like fifteen hundred dollars for all these back years of taxes because I assumed that a hey, Everything was included, but ultimately it wasn't included. It became a problem. So now every year when I pay my mortgage payment, the taxes, escrows, all of that stuff goes for parcel A with my home sit. And parcel B, I actually have to pay the tax payment on that separately. It's like 70 bucks a year because it's just the backyard is smaller, but it's a pain in the ass. So the bottom line is keep an eye out on your stuff, get things in writing, and don't let these things come back to bite you in the ass. And, and I'm just keeping it honest. If you could avoid taking out a second mortgage at all costs, please avoid doing it at all costs. The equity in your home isn't real money that you have. You never realize it until you sell it. So don't borrow from it if you don't have to. That's always a good thing. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video. And if you like this content, check out the content on the screen. There's going to be more videos related to finances, attorney reactions to current events and trending news.